So I feel like I'm on a bit of a campaign to show that a laser can do more than a 3D printer can do. I mean, I'm not being serious, guys, okay? Uh, but you can do an astounding amount of stuff with this laser. Now, we've done laser stacking where we're building up slice 3D models. We've done making graphene supercapacitors. We're going to do something with graphene oxide, really replicating what Dr. Kerner did. And I found something else where the laser was used to print copper, which I thought was really cool. Actually, with two sources of this, I suppose three, uh, a friend of mine pointed them out to me. There's a, a YouTube channel called Breaking Taps, so there's a couple of videos which were inspiration for me. Uh, and then there's the research papers. And you all know I love Dr. Kerner and his work, so quite a lot of this is pulled from Dr. Kerner's work. This one, actually, is from a paper here, Laser Assisted Metal Deposition. Uh, I'll put that in the description. Uh, and it is the same paper that Breaking Taps used, and he used uh, the laser, the mix in here to put copper onto glass. Now, the mix in here is really easy, so let's see how we make it. So this is the paper. It is laser-assisted metal deposition, uh, deposition from copper sulfate-based electrolyte solution. I'll put that in the um, description, actually, in case you want to look it up. And the um, recipe is actually just straightforward. In here, it's 0.1 molar solution copper sulfate, 0.2 molar solution sodium hydroxide, 0.125 molar solution of the um, potassium sodium tartarate and six molar solution of formaldehyde. So it's just given there, easy to follow. Just mix them up and you're away. And like I say, if you don't like the sound of them, find an alternative solution. Okay, and when you've done that, what you should get is this beautiful deep blue colored solution because that's what copper complexes look like. So it should go this kind of royal blue and that's now ready to use. Okay, so in order to use this stuff, Grab yourself a petri dish, grab yourself a slide, put a couple of bits of broken glass into your petri dish and then you slide on top of the broken glass. Then you add this until it just touches the bottom of the glass surface and then we can put it on the cook. Once that's cooked you end up with the glass slide covered in traces. Now the uh, are some problems with this, okay? I mean, I use formaldehyde. Um, breaking taps did suggest uh, ethylene and ethanol and glycerin. Uh, that leaves a lot of carbon crud. Uh, this gas produced, it takes absolutely forever because you, you need it on quite a high setting, 100%. It needs to be very slow, sort of like 50, uh, 50 millimeters per minute, that sort of speed and you need to do multi-passes in order to get a copper layer on it. So there's lots of problems with it. And um, I figured I'd have a go at improving it. Now, we made copper formate, and I've done a video, I haven't numbered it yet, so it's called copper nanoparticles or something like that. And we made copper formate. If we used copper formate, actually, we can do something really rather interesting. So you take your copper so, formate and you um, add triethanolamine. What happens is it will go this really rich, deep blue colour. That, in fact, is an organometallic ink. Now, when we paint that on top of something, let it dry, then stick it into burn, it'll come out amazing. OK, and that's what it's like when you put it on and it's dried. Now, what the ethanolamine does is it not only complexes the copper, but when that salt dries, it inhibits crystal formation, so you get a solid sheet rather than little crystal boundaries. Now it's ready to go onto the under the laser. And that's it. The salt washes off easily under the tap, leaving you your residual copper metal traces. There were a ton of advantages doing it that way, guys. One, I didn't need to put it in a bath. I painted the stuff on and dried it, so it was dry when it went in there. Well, that was a single pass. It was a single pass at 100% laser strength and 200 um, millimeters per minute so four times as quick one single pass and it didn't stink to high heaven the uh, formalin obviously reeks um, the glycerin and ethanol I don't know about really but I imagine it's quite smelly this one nothing at all it just cooked away and made those copper tracks that you saw on there now this is a circuit for a jewel thief so I may well make that up but I just wanted to show you that the copper tracks can be put onto something like a tile and um, they form a very nice conductive copper trace really, really easily. 
if you use copper formate and triethanolamine instead of a plating solution that um, Breaking Taps was suggesting. I would try it that way around and you get an awesome result. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you and thank you very much for watching.